Hello, I'm Assistant Attorney General Catherine Barron, and today it's my pleasure to pinch hit for Attorney General Dana Nessel and welcome you to our symposium. Attorney General Nessel deeply regrets not being able to join us today. So on her behalf, thank you for participating in our second Elder Abuse Task Force Symposium. You're in good company. We have about 330 pre-registered participants. Part of the Department of Attorney General's mission is to protect and support older adults. Today's symposium follows up on the symposium we held in May. The tape for both symposiums will be available on the Attorney General's website. May's symposium was held in honor of older Michiganians. And today's symposium is held in honor of World Elder Abuse Awareness. Actually celebrated on June 15th, uh, but we wanna be early. The early bird gets the biscuit and we love biscuits. The theme for this year's World Elder Abuse Awareness Day is building strong support for elders. Today, we are all about sharing these strong supports. In 2019, Attorney General Nessel asked her team to collaborate with the Mich Michigan Supreme Court to create the Elder Abuse Task Force. The state of Michigan combined its resources with more than 55 statewide organizations that share with us a common goal to protect Michigan senior population from abuse, neglect, or exploitation. We're holding this symposium as we did last month to raise awareness about issues important to older adults and to provide seniors and those whose work affects them with the resources needed to support Michigan's older population. The Elder Abuse Task Force tackles the challenges faced by older adults from every angle, law enforcement, healthcare, mental health, social services, and financial. We've developed and published 20 specific initiatives, many of which have been fine-tuned into legislation. Our guardianship conservatorship bills have been presented to the Michigan legislature, and we hope they'll receive a vote in the Michigan House of Representatives very soon. Here in Michigan, 73,000 older adults, 73,000 are victims of elder abuse each year. That's simply unacceptable. Today, we'll hear about the community resources available to victims of elder abuse. The Michigan Department of Health and Human Services will talk about adult protective services, specifically mandated reporters and what is necessary for adult protective services, determination that an older adult is vulnerable. Additionally, Michigan's long-term care ombudsman will talk about their services and training they offer. You'll also learn how to recognize a vulnerable adult and about signs of financial exploitation from the chief attorney in our financial crimes division. Then I'll have the pleasure of talking with you about elder abuse awareness and scam prevention. Our presentations today will provide you with valuable knowledge so that you can leave the symposium armed with information that allows you to support and protect older adults. And because the symposium is being taped, you can tell your friends to watch it at their convenience. I encourage you to ask questions for your benefit and the benefit of those watching the tape. If you have a question, likely others have that same question. Those who watch the tape can ask the question, so ask it for them. If you would like to stay informed about the ongoing work of the Elder Abuse Task Force, please sign up to receive our newsletter at mi.gov forward slash elder abuse. Now it's my pleasure to turn the symposium over to Kristen Steindorf. Kristen, is from the Financial Crimes Division. She's their first assistant and she's today's moderator. 
Kristen, take it away, my friend. I'm Kristen Steindorf. My pronouns are she and hers, and I'm the moderator for today. I'll keep things running on time and transition between presenters. If you'd like more information on the Elder Abuse Task Force, again, you can go to that mi.gov forward slash elder abuse page. If you scroll down and select Elder Abuse Task Force, once you're on that page, you'll see information there as well as links to the training produced by the task force. If you're interested in viewing last month's symposium, scroll down the page to the Elder Abuse Training Resources heading and click on May 2022 Elder Abuse Task Force Symposium. That will take you to a page that includes all six of the presentations from the May Symposium. You can watch the entire symposium from beginning to end, or you can pick and choose which presentations you'd like to watch. Later on, we will also post the recordings of today's symposium on the task force website. If you'd like to view other training created by the task force, go back to that elder abuse task, elder abuse training resources heading and click on view all elder abuse task force training. You can scroll down the page and pick a training by name, or you can use the search bar at the top to search for training by keyword. Here is the agenda for today's symposium. We have a 20 minute presentation on community resources for survivors of elder abuse, then a 20 minute presentation on adult protective services, followed by 10 minutes on the Michigan Long Term Care Ombudsman. Then you'll have at least a five minute break and then we will have a 55 minute presentation on recognizing vulnerable adults and financial exploitation. Our last presentation of the day will be 45 minutes on elder abuse awareness and scam prevention, followed by concluding remarks. We plan to allow time for questions and answers after each presentation, and we encourage you to type your questions into the chat box. To make sure the event runs smoothly today, Assistant Attorney General and Public Administration Division Chief Catherine Barron, who you've already heard from today, will be monitoring your questions. If you can't hear a speaker or a speaker is going too fast, please type a message into the chat to let Ms. Barron know. The Prosecuting Attorneys of Michigan Elder Justice Director, Scott Elfeld, is also assisting with questions and overseeing all of the transitions, and so you may also hear his voice today.